Don't be fooled by China Moses' fluent French. She's very much an American jazz singer. It's just that China has lived in Paris since she was eight years old. There's something magical about rivers. I think. Yeah, and the Seine is the Seine. It's a very magical one. Living in like Le Marais, every Sunday they close down the banks, and you see the Notre Dame. This is here. You look at the architecture. This is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's crazy. It's crazy. I live in a postcard, and would I ever want to give that postcard up? All this time you've lived in France, yeah. you still feel... I'm still American. Do the French think of you as American? No. Now they think, they, I have to remind them, no, I'm 100% American, that's why I'm a little crazy. And I smile and I talk loud. As soon as people hear this, I want everybody up on the stage. Yeah. It's a different energy. There is still time here. Time to? Have a coffee. Sit in a cafe. Sit in a cafe. We still do that here. There's less time for that now that China's career is taking off in Europe. Sitting here, reading my heart, I lay there, waiting for a lover to come. After five albums and successful tours in Germany and France, China is a hot talent on the European jazz circuit. Looking for some hot stuff, baby, this evening. And her talent flows from a deep source. Make my bed. China's mother is Dee Dee Bridgewater, one of the great voices of American jazz, who won accolades and a Grammy for her tribute to another American jazz legend, Ella Fitzgerald. You've talked about your mom being a role model for yeah. you. She came to France when she was 35 with her two kids, freshly divorced, and pretty much unknown, and rebuilt her name by herself and the art, French artistic world opened their arms to her. Why France? She's always dreamed of France. Like a lot of, uh, I think a lot of black musicians, we have a thing about France because in the 30s and 40s and, and 50s when, you know, some parts of the states you could not be considered as a, uh, a human being even. In France, you were going through the front door and people were putting you on magazines and you were part of the party just as much as everybody. The list of black musicians who have found refuge in Europe, and in France particularly, is extremely long. That history started when millions of American soldiers were sent across the Atlantic to help France defeat Germany in World War I. 200,000 African Americans, segregated into black regiments, also marched into Europe and music history, accompanied by their own jazz bands. For the war-weary French, the joyous sound of early jazz was a revelation and an instant hit. Many black American musicians, tired of prejudice they still face back home, jumped at the chance to stay and dazzle a city where the color lines were more fluid. Guys who came through the Army stayed, found out there was a lot of gigs and a lot of playing that they could do and call over for other musicians and they'd come over and get stuck. In the shadow of the Sacre Coeur, the basilica that still dominates the Paris skyline, those early jazz expatriates helped turn a sleepy hillside neighborhood called Montmartre into a bastion of the Roaring Twenties. When you look at the pictures and you look at rooftops and the different clubs that there were up in Montmartre, it must have been amazing to see true musicians coming off that boat and arriving and playing in some jazz club. That must have 
must have been cool. The French are the biggest supporters of jazz. Um, and that for the most American of music forms. Which is kind of crazy when you, when, you, when you think about it. And no one was crazier on stage than a young American dancer, Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. Who had escaped race riots in St. Louis and started her own riot when she opened in the Champs-Élysées Theater. When things were going really rough in the States, a lot of unknown musicians got these really weird invitations from music lovers. And they would sail for two weeks and get over to the old continent. And it was a whole nother world. Josephine would become the most famous and the most adored American expatriate who ever lived in France. And she returned that love in her biggest hit. She sang, I have two loves, my country and Paris. After World War II, Paris hosted another invasion. The bebop era. Modern jazz moved underground to the basements of Paris's left bank, where it became the soundtrack to a generation of young artists and philosophers. Many of its most daring innovators made the city their home. When they would get over here and be like, hey, yeah, I'm that same person you hear on that record playing with Dizzy Gillespie or Charlie Parker or Louis Armstrong, people would freak out. Jazz is America's classical music. And it was made from black people, but also white. It's a mashup of, 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 of colors, you know. And you, when you really look into jazz history, it's not just a black thing. And with this cross-pollinization, jazz became a French thing. That's why China's mother, Dee Dee Bridgewater, brought her family to this musical mecca. China wasn't thrilled. My mother was crazy to pull the move that she did, to bring me over when I was eight and my sister, who's seven years older than me. She threw me into this culture where they're eating thumper. Thumper was hanging in the butcher's window. <laughs> and I was like, they're eating thumper. That's Bambi's best friend. Oh, come on, a little left hand with I, I, <laughs> I know, but of course, after a while, I learned to appreciate it. And China learned a larger lesson as well. It's not about just being American. It's about considering the whole world your home and that there are no boundaries. Jazz wasn't always China's destiny. My mom pushed me into music. That's when I was trying to rap, and I was singing my choruses, and my mom played my songs to an a &R without telling me. That's a talent director responsible for signing artists. And he was like, you know, you really have a really great voice, really particular, but there's one thing, and I was like, what? And he was like, you can't rap. And my world shattered. I was like, oh, I'm not going to be the next Queen Latifah. <laughs> <laughs> but you grew up in a family where it was all about the music. It's all about music. It's all about art in my family. It's all about being who you want to be and at least trying and going for it. And never let an artificial boundary limit your creativity. Oh, things are what they used to be, no. Today, China is jumping between soul and jazz while preparing her contribution for a concert to honor another American classic, Marvin Gaye. Music is probably one of the arts that fascinates people the most because it's just us. I don't need a paintbrush. I don't need music. You are your instrument. Yeah, and it's really interesting that it's still it still has to be one of the most fascinating arts there because we just don't know why we're born with this. And we don't know why. It's not scientifically proven why music moves us so. Oh, he 